And this woman just started translating the whole Teacher of Teachers website into Portuguese. And she had all these mind transformations. She, you know, she just was having all these huge transformations. And eventually she translated the entire website uh, to Portuguese, came and visited me in, uh, in the United States. We did a, a, a webcast to uh, Portugal and to Brazil. So my first Portuguese webcast. And she made a, a, a she worked, worked, worked with me to make a, like a Yahoo group who would put all these teachings in Portuguese. And so these kind of things keep happening. It's like a backdrop for awakening where there's just a desire in, in a very voluntary way to extend a message uh, to different cultures and on different continents. So I've traveled basically through four continents, but um, I know, like the Movie Watchers Guide to Enlightenment that has been so helpful in English, they, that was translated to Spanish. And then recently I went to Spain and mm, I had a lot of the books, booklets, but they went really quick. People were just soaking it up because they wanted, a lot of these people in Spain wanted a, a way to go into their mind in a very quick way. And the Movie Watchers Guide in Espanol was the thing. And now there's People have just finished translating this book, one of the books, Healing in Mind, into Spanish. And so I met another man in Barcelona who, who his lifelong dream is to start a publishing company. And I think the first book that he's going to publish is going to be Healing in Mind in Spanish. So it just, it just cascades out over and over and over where all you do is you go for this experience yourself and then whatever words or expressions come from you, you know, people find helpful. And it's, it's certainly nothing that I planned. I, I had no intention of writing a book. I had no intention of, of doing bunches of web of pages, or no intention of doing all these travels. Really, this was not my plan at all. But it's just like one thing led to the next to the next, and then it's just gone on now for about uh, 18 years. And it's just, to see, it feels like it's just taking off. Uh, Helen and I feel like we're we're kind of getting more and more of these real silent states. So uh, it feels like a period of winding down when the world travels is coming too. But uh, everyone who knows me, when I wind down, there's like worlds of projects that seem to be going on around me. And uh, the psychic, one time uh, I was in Europe recently, she just said, "This is fascinating." She said, "I'm not picking up any ego." She said, "This." really fascinating for me. Usually I always have something to tell somebody in terms of the ego. But um, she said, you're like a pinpoint of stillness and there's all this vortex of energy that's like whirling around you, but you're just this, this point of, of light and stillness. And I said, oh, that's good. kind of an interesting psychic reading. Instead of what's going to happen to you in the future or what's, what's coming next or whatever, it was a pinpoint of stillness and a pinpoint of light. And I said, oh, that's it's nice. But that, for me, it, it does feel like it's all involuntary. And that's what Jesus says in the Course. He says, you know, miracles are involuntary. They should not be under conscious control. It hasn't been something that I've planned. Yes? David, would you mind just giving us a little bit of the special relationship is like this, the whole loose relationship is like that. So one person is the other. Conflicts. If you would mind. Yes. Yes, the special relationship is the motive underneath that is giving to get. You know, there's always an ulterior motive. There's always something looking for something back in return. You know, like I'll, I'll glad to give you this. I'm glad to do this for you, and so on and so forth. But, but I I do expect this in return. And the holy relationship is giving to give. I mean, you just that's your motive. You know, just like a flower gives off a fragrance, it doesn't like tell the wind, take the, take the fragrance over there, to that cow over there, or to that horse. You know, there's, there's just this sense of emanating, of just radiating, just sending off without any sense of, uh, of control, without, you know, any sense of trying to make something happen, just this pure sense of giving. Um, Special relationship is there are 
or demands associated with it. So we could say that holy relationship is really tuned into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never demands and never commands. So you can see where the gentleness is coming from. Uh, never commands and never demands. Imagine how wonderful all your relationships would be if you were never commanding and demanding. You know, that's more of that sense of live and let live. Uh, graciousness, gratitude, you know, there's not the strings attached. Like, you know, look what, look what I've done for you, what have you done for me lately, all that uh, stuff is is out. Um, it's also, I would say, when you are giving, you are giving from a sense of, of fullness, like the giving comes from within you, it comes from the source within you. It's not, um, it's really not giving in terms of the way the world sees giving either. You know, when you give a physical possession, then you divide its, or lessen its ownership. If you had a thousand dollars and you gave a thousand dollars away, the person you gave it to would have a thousand dollars and you would not have the money. You would have zero. Uh, or if you, let's say you say, I'm going to give you, I'm going to share my house with you. Put your name on the deed. I'll divide its ownership. So, in that sense of giving, as the world sees giving, there's always a sense of loss, or there's a sense of lessening or dividing. Whereas giving in terms of the spirit, it just is a win-win for everyone, it's an increase. You feel like an abundance, an increase through the giving. And Jesus says, ideas are strengthened as they're given away. So anytime you find yourself and the spirit's pouring through you and expressing these wonderful ideas, and also the attitude, not just the words, then you're actually strengthening it, you're increasing it in awareness through the giving. But there's no sense of the division or loss. So, those are some of the most dramatic uh, differences between specialness and holiness. Um, specialness also would involve the ego's uses of the body. And so, holiness would involve the Holy Spirit's uses of the body. So the Holy Spirit only uses the body as a means of communication. Anytime you use the body for anything other than communication, anytime you perceive it anything, as anything other than a communication device, you are misperceiving it and you are just strengthening that misperception in your mind. So, some examples, um, um, for example, competition. Competition is, is a quite a common thing in this world, whether we see competition going on between cultures or countries, uh, competitions such as uh, the Olympics, uh, or uh, soccer competitions, tennis competitions, sailing competitions, any kind of competition is, is motivated by the ego. Christ, or God, or we can say unified awareness, doesn't even know uh, what competition is. It doesn't even know that there are sides to be in competition. There are no parts competing. Um, typically, let's say with like something like rugby or Australian rules football or something like that, we, where soccer athletes seem to um, get bumps and bruises, uh, broken bones or torn ligaments or those kind of things. Uh, again, on the form level, it looks like when two bodies collide and you get a broken bone or a torn ligament, it seems like a, it's a pretty simple cause and effect relationship. You know, the collision between the bodies uh, causes the injury. But remember, nothing is as it seems in this world. It's the mind that believes in the ego that believes in the competition, which generates the guilt, and then the guilt is projected out onto the body, 